Oh, oh god, listen, there isn't much time. I know I should apologize for my absence, for how long this video has taken. I said I needed a break from Kickstarter Crafts, but I, I could never have expected this. You have to listen to me. You need to be warned of what is about to happen. He... Oh god, he's here. I can hear him. I can see the shimmer of his teeth in the dark. I knew I wouldn't be safe. I knew it. I... <laughs> And that is the last footage we have of what happened or of the suspect. The only bit of evidence we have left is this 20 to 40 minute long documentary that puts everything into perspective. Be warned, what you're about to see is extremely shocking. You know, when I started my YouTube career, I wasn't expecting to experience so early on the same level of dread and misery as Ian did after years of being asked to do a Jakey Pauly company chumpy. But here we are, the most highly requested video on this channel, Brought to you early because I have no spine. Uh, real quick, for a bit of post-recorded context, which I realized would be missing for the uninitiated. Back in 2015, IDUPS TV released an episode of Kickstarter Crap looking at Dayron Arius magazine, a paltry project helmed by the self-titled Dayron Arius. The whole thing was a bizarre, almost unnerving experience, as the whole magazine was just full of Dayron's always gleaming face, plagiarized articles, odd sentence structures, and fake advertisements for brands which Dayron had nothing at all to do with, and even completely made up products. No one would go through the trouble of, you know, having a price breakdown for each of the pieces of clothing, make a fake name for the hairstylist, the makeup artist, even has the photo shoot location up there. I just couldn't take no for an answer, so I did a reverse image search of the man in the leather jacket and I found out that he is in fact stock photo handsome man thinking. You can find a link to the Kickstarter crap in the description, but this alone should give you a general sense for who or what a Dayron Arius is. Dayron Arius. A mysterious character to be sure. One must wonder what lies behind his ever-present Cheshire smile. What secret dealings led to the wealth and luxury he brags about in his social media? What was it that had made him believe in his own talents to a degree where he'd not only start his own self-titled magazine, but even go as far as to launch a baffling Kickstarter for it? After all, as Ian had pointed out in his video, Dayron's most apparent skill was plagiarizing articles and plastering fake adverts with his face and name on them. They buy Dayron Arius. But as you read them, you say to yourself, well, this doesn't sound like it's been written by a Dayron Arius. So you do a reverse word search and find that he's plagiarized the entire article. So how could he afford all of this, and why? I had feared going into this video. Right when I started my YouTube career with Lusik, I had people asking about Dayron, and I had honestly responded how I worried of what I would discover. His apparent sickening joy of being alive aside, my main concern was his financial situation. And as I went into this research, I developed several potential theories. The first, and the one which seemed most likely to me, was that Dayron was some sort of crypto bro. Cursory looks through his social media showed him posting a bunch of tech-related stuff, and if he'd gotten in early, that'd explain the obscene wealth. That said, unless he'd posted about it, I wouldn't ever know. Same goes for the second possibility, inheritance. Say for him tweeting out, oh my god, I'm so hashtag sad over the hashtag death of my hashtag rich hashtag grandma hashtag god bless, I would be unlikely to know if this was the case, especially since Arius is an extremely common surname in South and Central America, with over 150,000 Ariuses just in Mexico and 30,000 of them in Cuba. And the final option, and one I saw as least likely, the idea that he'd actually legitimately earned this money. Nigh impossible, I thought. Whatever the case, I was determined to find out. As is usually the case, our first stopping point ought to be the Kickstarter. Unfortunately, unlike our other subjects, Dayron has done a much more thorough job of covering his tracks, as the Kickstarter project and his Kickstarter profile have been permanently removed. Luckily, a snapshot from 2015 does exist on Wayback Machine, as well as the record on KickTrack. It was launched on August 24th, ended on September 23rd, and raised no money at any point because, I mean, just look at it. The latest snapshot of the project on Kickstarter is in German, for some reason, but shows all you need to see. It was extremely bare-bones and simultaneously poorly thought out, 
while having too much thought put into specific details, such as the median household income of the intended reader. There was only one single reward tier, for $50, limited to 10 people, giving a year subscription to the magazine, while his description touted that it would be available for free for everyone to read. Boast as he did about his skills with Adobe, he wasn't one for being that good at marketing, clearly. The project itself didn't answer any questions, nor did the video, which had just been footage recorded from a photo shoot for the magazine's cover. We'd need to go deeper. The first step ought to be the same as the one taken by IDUPS, the website Daron had provided, DaronAriasMagazine.com. Just like with the project, the website is not available anymore. Or so is the immediate thought, as the link is actually a redirect to Dayron's page on Issu, as shown by Wayback Machine. The redirect doesn't work anymore, being down since about 2018, but the page is still up. Why does this page contain the same link again, which would redirect them to that same page? Dude, I don't know, Dayron's too intelligent for me to understand this. The earliest capture of the Issu page is from 2011, which is a trend among many of the pages I ran into. They had been archived in the early 2010s, quite possibly by Dayron himself, although I can't be sure of that, of course. The 2011 snapshot doesn't offer much to look at, however, and the 2015 ones are not much better. Or best look into what the magazine's site, which had hosted an issue of said magazine, then comes from the Kickstarter crap video. Again, something is missing. This is not the site we're interested in for our research. But we're getting closer, because the real site is simply titled DayronAreas.com. Another now defunct site, yes, but one with more insightful snapshots brought to us by the Internet Archive. The oldest snapshot of the site comes from 2010. Once again, the implication being that either Dayron or someone close to him was doing the archiving, although the archive version is very broken. And here's our first encounter with what Dayron is more than anything else, a graphics designer. The original purpose of the Dayron area site was just advertising his services as a graphics designer. It is at this point that you might look at the entire concept of Dayron Arius magazine in the future and go, oh, okay, that makes sense. But we'll get to that later. It was in 2012 that the site was revamped to more than just graphics design. Again, the snapshot is highly borked, but it already lists things like the magazine, radio shows, TV shows, and more. Again, someone's done a fairly decent job archiving the site, as the navigational buttons all lead to archived pages. Definitely Dayron's work. Here's where I'll deviate from talking just about the sites Dayron's built, and talk about the radio side of it. Because from everything I could find, it seemed legit. Dayron's site boasts about the radio network reaching people across the English and Spanish-speaking worlds, which I'm frankly not quite sure on if it's just one network which seems to have been entirely in English, but what do I know? I couldn't find a frequency, and at first I was fairly certain that this might have been some kind of ruse, and that Dayron had claimed to be the owner of a radio station when it had actually been some kind of podcast series. Hello, my Twitter followers, Facebook, Instagram, <coughs> LinkedIn, everywhere you follow me on social media. But the internet proved me wrong. Several sites, including Top Radio, MyTuner Radio, and FM Radio Free, all listed as a legitimate, now defunct radio station. And okay, fine, it was real. But Daron makes another fairly bold claim, which is hard to prove or believe at all. A biography on his Flickr page reads in part as follows. Dayron produces and hosts the Dayron Arias Radio, his radio talk show, broadcast throughout the world in Spanish and English. On November 28, 2010, it was announced that Arias had signed a three-year, $55 million contract with XM Satellite Radio to establish a new radio channel. The channel broadcasts every week on XM Radio Channel 188. Dayron's contract requires him to be on the air every week, 39 weeks a year. A couple of things to note, and I'll start with the small stuff before addressing the giant, bright red, glowing money elephant in the room. XM Satellite Radio was indeed a thing in 2010, but in 2011 it was merged with Sirius Radio and became Sirius XM. So by the time we get a look at his site at DayronArias.com, that merger has already happened. 
This is only really relevant in that finding anything about anything prior to this merger is very, very difficult. To the point where just looking up XM Satellite Radio brings up Sirius XM, but not even the Wikipedia page for the pre-2011 company. XM Radio Channel 188 would give us the channel where you'd have been able to hear Dayron's shows, but currently Sirius XM uses Channel 188 for a play-by-play, -play, which is a, uh, a, sports, a sports ball thing. Now, about the money. 55 million dollars over three years. That's over 20 mil a year. Dayron wants us to actually believe that XM paid him nearly 20 million dollars a year for a new channel. New! He was a graphics designer two years beforehand and little else, so this just seems insane. Currently, SiriusXM has a market cap of 23 billion. So is 55 million physically possible in 2010? Sure, I guess, I don't know. There's no way to verify these numbers, even with deals being made recently being done behind closed doors and not disclosing details of the sums of money involved. But in 2020, it was said that SiriusXM was paying Howard Stern 90 million a year. If we ignore inflation and logic, that would imply Dayron needed to bring in one-fifth of the listeners and revenue for this to have been a sound investment. But who knows? It's possible that this had also just been a verifiably terrible investment, but one XM Radio for some reason actually made. However, if you look at the numbers listed on the website, under his biography as it's written there, that's 1.7 million. About 550,000 a year, a far more reasonable sum. Still good money, and Darren could probably live fairly well off of that. Why he'd list 55 million elsewhere, I couldn't tell you. Further confirmation that this was, in fact, a real radio station comes from one more source. Those being the guests who had appeared on the station. One person is Dr. Rob Cisna. I don't know if they're a real doctor, don't ask. But they have a last FM page which lists the station as one of the places where her show had initially aired. Similarly, a blog hosted by one Ann Ford, titled Connect with your Guardian Angel with Ann.com, also lists the network and its association with XM Series Channel 188. Moving on from the radio side of things, Dayron seemed to want to take a step further and establish a whole network, including TV broadcasting. Although there is a dedicated page to his TV endeavors on his main site, there's actually a separate site as well. One I, again, found through his Flickr posts at first, titled DayronAriusNetwork.com. And again, it's been archived as early as 2011. God bless this man's narcissistic tendencies for making my job so much easier for me. The site claimed in 2011. Dayron Arius' show is back, and it's not a radio show anymore, instead is a television series. After so many years of intense work, Dayron Arius acquired its own television network known as DAN, Dayron Arius Network. You can now purchase Dayron's network on AT&T, Uverse, DirecTV, Comcast, and Dish Network, only available in HD. You may contact your local network providers for prices and discounts. Dayron Arius created a multi-platform media network called DAN, Dayron Arius Network, which is more than a social network is the official website for everything in Dayron's world. The network offers a TV shows, radio shows, and a magazine. It's all about being social, also it was designed to entertain, inform, and inspire people to live their best lives. DAN debuted on January 1st, 2011 in the United States, and more countries coming soon. DAN also includes the award-winning digital platform. What awards is he talking about? If I had to guess, the Dayron Arius Academy Award in Excellence. But again, it's fairly possible he had some broadcast deal signed where he did, in fact, have his own TV channel for a while, although now, same as with the radio show, only a few recorded bits of footage exist online. In fact, only one actual clip of anything other than Dayron's personal vlog content exists, at least from what I was able to find. A minute-long teaser trailer for a documentary called Miami A True Story, uploaded on Vimeo. All it is, is a minute of footage, 
interspersed with random tidbits of text, including two awards without mention of where they came from. A New York Times quote, which I couldn't locate online because I'm pretty sure that's just another thing he's completely made up. And then there's a quote from himself, which, when it came up, gave me a laughter-induced aneurysm, and it ends on this screen. Yeah, it seems pretty normal, except for the part where he lists up iMovie. iMovie presents and in association with iMovie, the fucking video editing software. Is he saying he's in partnership with them because he edited a video with iMovie? Is that how it works? What is the point of any of this? Who is then sick convincing? Dare on you! Fuck! Other than that though, I couldn't find much more about the TV network. It might be worth digging deeper at a later time. Then, of course, comes the magazine. But before we get to it too, I'd like to take another detour. A detour into who Dayron actually is. The following information was collected by me, combing through years of Dayron's posts on his websites and social media, including his Twitter and Facebook. Sadly, his Instagram, which would have hosted some of his earliest social media posts, is privated, and understandably so. Although he had an online presence years before, it's around 2011 that he started to be far more active, with the use of Twitter, Instagram, and updates to all of his personal sites. Although it would take a few years more for his YouTube to see more uploads, as until around 2012 to 2013, the only content on there were guides to using Google Wave made in Spanish. Usando este correo, pues van a tener acceso más rápido y más confiable. Su página, si tienes una página, en este caso mi blog, cuando damos un clic, pues va a ir directamente a nuestro blog, a mi blog de tecnología. And as I am currently editing this, I realize that this clip here actually gives us confirmation that yes, Dayron did in fact have a uh, tech blog before he had this whole Dayron Arius network thing. But uh, I'm, I'm not too, you know, upset about not uh, pointing it out earlier because the whole thing appears to be in Spanish and I don't, I don't speak Spanish, so... It's there, though. Anyways, Dayron Arias, a Cuban-born Florida man who spends his days with his significant other and their dogs, frequently posts about what food he's eating, likes photography and works, mainly, as a graphics designer and digital marketing expert. Just from that description alone, he sounds like the most normal guy in the world, doesn't he? Well, I'm here to tell ya that he is. I debated with myself how deep I should go into this and how obtuse I ought to be. When I went into this video at first, I was under the impression that we'd be looking at a Lusik situation as someone who has purposefully put their whole life out there for all to see, in hopes of gaining a bit of fame and fortune for themselves. But I don't think that's ever actually been the case with Dayron, allow me to explain. There was a post on the iDub subreddit some years ago, claiming that Dayron's a sociopath, that he's talking to an audience of nobody as if he were a celebrity. And with the way most people encountered his magazine, and with the way the iDub's video went, Naturally, a lot of people would look at his posts and come to the same conclusion. In fact, the way I've structured this video so far, I've been playing into that expectation on purpose, talking about these sites and all of Dayron's posts as emblematic of his own inflated ego. But his behavior doesn't make sense as that of someone who yearns to be in the spotlight. Again, let's look back. Back at Gator, Caffeine and Lusik. Lusik wanted to be famous. He believed he deserved to be famous. So when iDubs did his video on him, he felt the need to retort. He saw this as his shot at greatness, and for a while he kept up with it, getting subscribers and views out of it, though mostly because of how cringy people saw his content. Either way, he sincerely believed his response to iDubs would score him points and make him bigger than ever before. And the finger curled on the monkey's paw there. A similar case is that of Caffeine, where again, he wanted to make it big, and he thought he could capitalize on it by roasting items in turn. Gator Poon didn't seem like they were aiming for fame necessarily, but they too felt the need to respond to Ian's video. But what about Dayron? Whatever the case might be, he obviously knows about Ian's video. There's no way in hell he of all people had never googled his own name to see it as one of the top results. 
or that nobody has ever sent it to him, or that he hadn't been harassed on social media about it before. That's why he had blocked me, of course. He wanted nothing to do with it. He likely saw the video. He was probably offended by it. And he did what is, frankly, probably the most intelligent thing to do in this situation. He moved on. And while he's received some harassment, I mean seriously, the guy just posted a selfie, this is uncalled for, he's avoided most of it, compared to just about everyone else I've covered in this series. He never acknowledged the spotlight that had been shined upon him, and the lack of reaction meant the harassment very quickly died down. I believe the internet has taught us to be overly cynical, about pretty much everything. We see a guy who has money to spend and assume he's done something shitty to have it. We see him smile wide in every picture of him ever taken, and we assume he's faking it, that he's secretly miserable, that he can't just be happy to be alive. We see a man posting frequent updates on his social media, and we assume he's trying to be an influencer. His posts could be attempts at playing that social media game, or they could just be posts made for his friends and family, as indicated by all the posts which are very explicitly directed at his friends and family which you can tell by them literally saying, for my friends and family. His YouTube channel contains quite a few videos, and most of his personal content specifically, which I can qualify as actually being made for a broader audience in the form of tech reviews. But Invicta decided to send me this amazing watch that you could get at evine.com, and this is the Invicta Vento. Vento. <laughs> This is, this is why I just practice this by doing this. Anyway, this is the Invicta Venom Collection. The Venom Collection is... But even those are mostly made not so much as an influencer, but more as a guy just unboxing and reviewing things in his room with his friends. Remember when I messed up and I thought that it was uh, Captain America and it actually was Spider-Man. That yes. was crazy. Yes, you did mess that up. That one simple thing based on colors. But you know, I have to say, the colors are almost the same, Captain America and Spider-Man. Yes, it is similar, just similar. There is one video on there that struck me the most with how cynical I had been. It was him in the park, with his partner and their dogs going about, talking about how lovely the day is. I instinctively balked. Ha, <laughs> who does this guy think he is? Who does... Who does he think cares? Why could he go out to the park and enjoy the day without recording himself? But he could. And he had many times before and after, I'm sure. There's nothing wrong with wanting to record a moment like that, nor wanting to share it. Not just with strangers online, I don't think he's ever really cared about them, but with his friends and loved ones. Sure, other folks would find it. Sure, it had been posted amidst the tech reviews and later posts of the radio show he had worked on, but it was still just a personal moment he decided to share. That's all it really was. There are some other videos like that too, made with his friends, including one I spotted made with one of the people he'd worked with on the radio station. But Walter, Walter, what are you talking about? What about everything else? The station, the network, the websites, the magazine? The way he cataloged all of those paste editions of those sites for posterity? And now that I'm saying it out loud, it's starting to shape up where that was happening, isn't it? I do believe to some degree he did all of that for money or name recognition. At some point, I'm sure he wanted that. Maybe he still does, to some degree, but on his own terms rather than Ian's or his fan bases. Whatever the case, the sense I get from all of these projects, and the clear involvement of all of his friends in them, it seems more like these were just things he wanted to try his hand at, rather than serious long-term ventures. If they had a long-term purpose, that purpose is given to us by Dayron, on his Flickr and LinkedIn pages. While he boasted about his successes to be sure, he's not primarily a radio host, or a TV star, or a producer, or director, or actor, or influencer. Remember what that first edition of the Dayron Area site said? He's a graphics designer, a multimedia designer actually, as he's called himself on LinkedIn and as it says on Behance. Highly creative and multi-talented graphic designer, with extensive experience in multimedia, advertising, and marketing with a strong foundation in print design, photography, commercial arts, computer applications, complemented by knowledge of business operations. 
All of these projects then could have existed not as a look at how great and entertaining I am as a person type of deal, but instead as a look at how good I am at making websites and advertisements. Logging every new edition of his websites on Wayback Machine? Maybe a way to stroke his ego, or maybe a way to show off his past work and progress over time to anyone interested in his talents, albeit of course his sites are now fairly broken on the archive. And the magazine? Surely that one has to be a thing he did for his own, and if you check his Behance page, he literally does print design for magazines. The reason all those articles had a bunch of text not written by Dayron? Because the text probably didn't matter. The reason all those fake advertisements were plastered all over the magazine? Because Dayron wasn't selling you those products, he was selling his ability to make advertisements for you. With his friends being new age doctors and esoterics and his partner running a transit company, there would also be plenty of waiting rooms amidst his friend group to scatter his magazine around a bit and try to get some clout for his business. We know printed editions of the magazine do exist since items received one in a bad unboxing. Dayron Aries magazine, guys. Actually received one. Oh, this is great because this is the sort of thing I'd want to buy myself for the video, but I wouldn't want to give money to the person making it. And they're available on Amazon, and I frankly would love to get one myself. The Kickstarter project was an abject failure to be sure, but the initial thought was likely much the same. Advertising. Had it succeeded, he could catalog it. <clears throat> Had it succeeded, he could catalog it and show it off to clients. Since it failed, he'd remove the project from the site, no harm, no foul. As excited as you all have been for this video, my ultimate conclusion? Dayron's just a guy. He's just a guy living his best life, as his social media boldly proclaims. I don't know what he's up to nowadays. His LinkedIn lists his previous work as being in 2020. His last tweet actually comes from New Year's 2022. But at the very least, he's probably not in jail. Since he took the time to block me in the middle of last year and has liked some random tweets this January. For as nervous as I was of what I could discover, I think I've come out of this video a better person. And I hope you guys can do the same. Sometimes assuming the worst of someone might be right, and sometimes assuming the best is a mistake, but sometimes it's better to just leave your assumptions by the wayside, and not hurry to form your opinions on people just from initial impressions. With that, I'll bid you guys farewell. There are some other folks I need to track down for future content. While I have you here though, do feel free to share my videos around if you can, it helps a lot. I don't want to bother the iDub subreddit with more of my posts, and I think there's a bit of an unofficial moratorium on my content there, but I'm not sure. That said, the algorithm only works that much. If you think your friends or your grandma would like my content, send it their way. Alright, bye. Wait, if it wasn't Dayron, then, then who was it?